Okay students, so it's time for our next independent learning video. This is a very, very quick one. Uh, I, I expect really all students to do very, very well on this, this test, and it's on phonology. And in case you're wondering, this is an ear that I've drawn. That is exactly what that is. It is an actual ear. Um, so uh, well done on my old artistic skills then. So phonology, um, well, it's got the word phone at the front, hasn't it? Phon, which is this sort of uh, um, idea of, of sounds. So we're going to do another video in future on spoken features that's a slightly different issue what we're talking about here really is focusing on in written texts how can you get a sense of sound across so what terminology do we know and what can we use to get a sense of sound across and the nice thing about this is that you'll probably know most of it already from GCSE okay so very very quickly we have a look at the booklet on age 18 18 page 18 okay and all we're doing to start with is just looking at some of the key uh, bits of terminology. Ooh, that's your test that's sort of sneaking in there. I've actually written the test. I'm not going to show you that yet. Uh, that's what you're doing. Uh, so uh, here's some of the key features then of, 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 of sound effects in text. You probably know some already. I'd expect everybody to know alliteration, a reposition of consonant sounds. So um, I, I can't go into it just now, the difference between consonants and vowels. But if, if you're not sure, you, you really do need to look, look them up. You need to certainly know what the vowels are in English. Um, but for example, if you're repeating consonant sounds, not vowels, it's called alliteration. That's love's labours lost, repetition of the same sort of consonant there. Assonance is when you repeat a vowel sound, so it's usually in the middle of a word. So Moses presupposes his toeses are roses, yeah? Uh, on one of the greatest ithuths, the mythuths of dithuths, tithuths, for example. Um, so that is, sorry, sorry about that. Um, so uh, this is all about um, uh, vowel sounds being repeated, like O oh and E, and so they're usually in the middle of words, okay? Consonants is um, repetition of consonant sounds, but they don't have to be at the start of a word. So if you uh, it rap rejects my tape deck, eject its projectile, we've got that sort of consonant sound, jet, that cluster of consonants, jet, 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 but it's in different parts of the word. So sort of we technically use alliteration for when it's at the start of a word, and consonants when you get the same sort of consonant clusters of sounds, but they're not necessarily at the start of the word. Okay, onomatopoeia, I do expect you to spell it correctly. Onomatopoeia is the idea. If you don't know what the vowels are, they're all in there. Um, th this is where the word resembles the sound it denotes. So uh, words like bang and crash and slurp and twang and all the rest of it. It's like you've, you've written the word to try and get across the sound itself in a way. So zip and things along those lines. Uh, onomatopoeic words, onomatopoeia. Okay, uh, rhyme is when we have a, a sort of N sound that's repeated, so frankly, Mr. Shankly. So um, we're repeating the sort of a, a, a N sound, so often there's usually sort of consonant, then a vowel, frankly, Shankly, li, li, okay? So obviously in poetry, we might expect quite a lot of that. And then rhythm is where we have a regular beat within a line. So um, within uh, Shakespeare in prose, for example, uh, you would have um, a particular beat of what we call iambic pentameter, da dum, da dum, da dum, da dum, da dum, da dum. Dum da dum da dum da dum da dum, uh, unstressed and then stressed syllable um, within within Shakespeare. So, um, uh, but uh, but soft what yonder light from window breaks. Or uh, but soft what light from yonder window breaks. That's the one. Yeah. So da dum da dum da dum da dum da dum. It tends to have that rhythm throughout the entire piece. So a regular beat within something. And uh, remember, we're talking about written texts here, not necessarily our transcripts. Okay, uh, and then sibilance, which is alliteration of hissing sounds, which is not easy for me to do. Um, so, uh, S or the soft C, uh, like in stealing, um, uh, X, S, that X, the Z, sh, ch, and th. So, sib, soft sibilant sounds. Uh, and S sibilance um, is often used in, in literature to connote um, uh, something quite sinister or strange is going to happen. It sounds a bit like a snake, doesn't it? Um, but it can also be used for sort of passion as well. Sort of if you, if you have certain types of text that are quite sort of passionate or there's two characters are getting together, you might have lots of sibilance in there. Okay. At A level, though, we do expect you to be able to uh, look a little bit closer at the types of alliteration that you can get, a more phonological understanding. And this is really important once we get to more spoken texts, where we're going to learn something called the IPA, which is when we're looking at spoken records, transcripts of, of actual conversation. Um, it's a way of really honing out the different sounds that you have. So we learn this new alphabet 
which helps us here. So this is a nice way into it. So we've got sibilant, plosive, liquid, fricative, and nasal. Different types of alliteration. So let's have a look. Sibilant alliteration, well, we've already seen. These are your sibilants. Sam Smith, Charlie Chaplin, Ziggy Stardust. But notice how it's still sibilant alliteration, even though we've got a different consonant, a different consonant at the start, because they're all sibilants. They're all um, uh, uh, sort of words that are that soft hissing sound in, in English. So Sam Smith, if it was Sam Chaplin, it would still be sibilant in that way. Okay, and look again here. So we're onto the plosive one. So that plosives are like B and P sounds. Um, D, T, K, C, G as well. K, I beg your pardon, and, and G. So um, B and P and D and T and K and G. Things along those lines. Uh, uh. So they're sort of almost from the throat in a way. Donald Trump. So notice how it's not alliterative in the sense that you've got different uh, letters at the start, but they're both plosives. D and T, Donald Trump. Peter Pan and Calvin Klein. They're plosive in that way, okay? Liquid sounds are sounds that are made uh, like L and R sounds. So um, L and R in English, at least. Um, so um, L and R, some dialects have uh, what we call the rhotic R, which is slightly different, but um, L and R, so they're like rolling of the mouth, like that. So Laurie Lee and Ryan Reynolds. But again, if it was Laurie Reynolds, it would still be um, a liquid alliteration there. Okay, fricatives, uh, the nice way to remember fricatives is Fs. So F and V and Th, so F and V and Th, okay? So um, uh, Freddie Flintoff and Fred Flintstone. Um, okay, so Fred F, 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 Flintstone and Fred uh, and, and Freddie Flintoff. And then nasal would be ones um, where you have ums and ums. So if you think about when you're making those sounds, um and um, it comes from the almost above the top of the palate, sort of like mm, the back towards the top of your mouth, mm and mm. So it's a nosy sound. And I've got a little bit of hay fever at the moment, so I'm sounding a little bit more nasal in general. So mamma mia or something along those lines. So if you, so what we want you to do is to is to fill in the rest of this with some more um, examples of, uh, of alliteration. And do remember, it doesn't have to be starting with the same letter, provided it's the same types of sounds for sibilant, plosive, liquid, fricative, and nasal nasal alliteration. Okay, next thing is homophones and phonological puns or homophonic puns. Homophones, uh, words that are uh, sounding similar but have different meanings and phonological puns or homophonic puns uh, is, is, is uh, sort of a play on words that relies on the similarity of words. What did the grape say when it was crushed? Nothing, it just let out a little wine. Ha 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 ha. So that's a little play on wine, which would be spelled differently with W-H-I-N-E, and then wine, as in the thing that you know you make out of grapes. It's never funny if someone has to explain a joke to you. Right, okay, so uh, homophones then two words or groups of words that sound similar of different meanings, such so great versus great, humorous versus humorous, wine versus wine. They're homophonic, sound the same, you know, sound the same, homo and phone sound the same. So they'd be spelled differently, but they would be um, uh, um, uh, um, two different words. That's as opposed to what we call like polysemic, multiple meanings, where you have a word that's spelled the same, but it means two different things, like minute and minute, for example. So they don't sound particularly similar, but they're spelled the same. They're polysemic, multiple meanings, but they have um, uh, so same spelling, different meanings. These have similar um, spellings, same sounds, and, and obviously you can make a lot of puns out of those. And then phonological or homophonic puns are wordplay that relies on homophones, such as this one, wine and wine. Okay? Um, say what you like about, the, uh, the, about Switzerland, but the flag is a huge plus, etc. Yeah? Um, actually, no, that's polysemic, isn't it? Am I telling that? A huge plus? Yeah, it is, yeah, because plus, as in, it looks like an ad. And yeah, just ignore that completely. Um, yeah, that's polysemic. I can't think of a homophonic pun. You can think of some homophones anyway, right? Uh, next one would be, given that we're talking about written texts, um, these are things that mirror spoken, lydex, uh, spoke, spoken, spoken language. So pseudoprosody and I dialect are two terms that we need you to know. We're going to learn a whole series of other terms for when it actually is a spoken text, as in a transcript, a recording of actual conversation. But this is when it's a written text and you're giving it a sound like quality. These are some techniques that you can use. So pseudo meaning fake and prosody meaning sort of sound features. 
sounds complicated, pseudoprosodic effect, pseudoprosodic features, pseudoprosody, but it's really actually quite simple and you do it all the time. So these are choices like capitals, italics, and bold to imply, imply things like volume and emphasis and, and things like that, emphatic stress. So we must not fail. Anytime you're capitalizing to suggest volume, you're doing pseudoprosody or italics for emphasis or bold perhaps to suggest sort of emphatic stress, something like that. Then we've got I dialect, dialect meaning like a particular way of speaking, and then um, a regional sort of uh, type of, of language, and I, it, 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 you see it. So, for example here, let's go tune, let's go tune, that's a sort of I dialect referencing a sort of Geordie accent. Um, hello, governor, hello, governor. This is sort of referencing sort of a Cockney accent, and is this your handbag? Yes, is this your handbag, which is referencing a, a sort of French uh, accent version of English, isn't it? So I dialect is this idea of, of using uh, a different non-standard spelling to reflect a particular accent. It's not the IPA, it's not actually a record of, um, of spoken language, but it is an attempt to show it visually, so I dialect. And that's it, that's all the spoken features that you need to learn, phonological features, I beg your pardon, that you need to learn, and it's spoken features next.